to start you have to open your Unity version and you have to make a new project by clicking either here or here. Okay, and once you're taken to the next screen, we just have to set the project name and where it's going to be stored. So I'm simply going to name this basketball and the location is going to be a projects folder that I just created under my home folder. Let's make sure 3D is enabled here to make sure everything is going to work and also we're going to click on create project. So let's just wait a few seconds for it to be ready. Okay, and after the code is ready, after the necessary setup is ready, here we are in the Unity Editor. And for this game, let's make sure that if you go to the game window, you're going to select the resolution to be free aspect, just for now. Okay, so with this project open, we have to decide a few things. When you make a basketball game, there are several different ways you can make it. It could be a two-dimensional game, it could be uh, made of 3D assets, but in a 2D perspective, for example, we could have a retro look. But for this project, to keep things simple, we're going to make it three-dimensional. We're going to use basic 3D primitives that are already built in Unity. And we're also going to execute this from a first-person perspective. Okay, It's like you're playing a shooter game, for example, but instead of shooting bullets, you're simply going to throw the basketball towards a certain direction and try to score uh, a point by making the ball go through the hoop. So, how do you activate the first-person shooter mode? Some of you, if you are working on your first projects, you might think, uh, okay, there is going to be some 3D knowledge here that is going to be necessary. It's going to take some time to learn. I need to learn uh, a lot of mathematical concepts. Uh, that would be true um, several years back, but since we are working with Unity, you can use packages that already have that implemented for you. So there is no need to reinvent the wheel if you already have the entire logic ready for you. So if you go to the assets menu here at the top, you have an option that says import package. And once you enter there, you're going to see custom package. This is if you downloaded something from the internet and then you would browse for the package file and then import everything into Unity. But in this case, we want to see the things built in with the, the Unity editor, okay? So you have a few options here, 2D, cameras, characters, cross-platform input, there are lots of things here, but we want to use characters. Once you click there, you're going to see a new menu opening here that says import Unity package. It's like you're extracting a zip file, for example, a compressed file. There are going to be several other things inside. You're going to see folders, you're going to see scripts, images, materials, uh, animations. There's tons of content here. You don't have to mark or unmark anything. You just have to press import, wait just a little bit, and all the assets are going to be in your project. So once this is done uh, importing, you can go to the project window here, make sure the assets folder is selected, and you're going to see a new folder pop up here, okay, after the import process is done. So it's great that Unity has uh, that uh, way to use assets that were already implemented. You can just go to the asset store, you can find some free or some paid assets, import to your project, and focus on making the game instead of reinventing the wheel. Okay, so there we go. Here in the assets folder, we have another folder called standard assets. We're going to open that. Here, there are other subfolders like cross-platform input, editor, utility, but we just need to go to characters. Here, there are three folders. We're going to worry about the first one, which is the first-person character. And to integrate the first-person character in the game, it's very, very simple. You just go to the prefabs folder, you're going to get this FPS controller prefab, then drag and drop in the hierarchy, okay? So this is everything that we need to activate the first person mode. So if you go to the scene here, you see that if you have the first person controller selected, uh, it's going to be right here in the center of the world. If you press the play button now to test this, okay, it's basically to, to set the game to be active, then if you move your mouse around, you're going to be able to see the sky, okay? If you uh, rotate your mouse a little bit, you're going to find the sun. So the entire logic for that is working. But here are a few comments. Notice that here in the bottom we have a message that says, there are two audio listeners in the scene, please ensure there's always exactly one listener. 
So if you open the console window here, or by going to window and console, you can see the entire message. The thing is, if you select the first person controller and you look at this scene, you're going to see that there is a camera icon here. This exists because we're going to see things, we're going to see the entire world from the perspective of the first person player that is here, from the character. However, if you look a little bit more, you see that there is another camera here. This came with the default project, so this is not going to be needed. You just select that main camera here in the hierarchy, right click and choose delete. So we're going to have only one, uh, one element here. Okay. And another thing that you must uh, have noticed, if you select the first person controller in the hierarchy and press play, take a look at the inspector. You're going to see that the position here on Y is always decreasing. So why this is happening? The way the, the coordinates work in Unity is you have three values for every visual element that is going to be here. You have a value for X, you have a value for Y, and a value for Z. Okay, And if you look at the scene window, you can see these arrows here if you have this moving tool selected. So the red arrow is for the X value and this is the horizontal position of whatever you have selected. The blue one is the Z axis, so that is for the depth, you can see the value changing here, and Y is for the vertical axis. So if Y is getting negative, it means that the player is falling. Okay, so physics is already working for this first person controller. So we need to make a floor so our player is not going to basically fall forever. So we come here to hierarchy, we're going to right click, choose 3D object and then cube. Once you do that you're going to see a cube in this scene. To make things simple for us we want to make sure that the position of this cube is going to be 0 on X, on Y let's use minus 2 and Z is going to be 0, so it's going to be right below the player. Okay, you see the player is high enough so it's not, it's not touching this cube here. With the cube selected we want to make it a, a bit uh, larger than this. So we can change the scale on X to say 10 for example and Z can be 20. Okay, and we should also get this cube and rename it to floor. And just by doing that if you press the play button you're going to see that the player falls and is here in the ground. Okay, you can walk around and you're not going to be falling forever. Okay, so once you have all of these things done, another thing that you might want to do is to give a color to this floor so it's going to be easier to see. So this is the first moment where we're going to create something that is related to this project. Everything we did so far was built in Unity. Okay, so we have an FPS controller, we made a cube and transformed it into a floor, we have a directional light. So here's a, a very important tip to you. Once you start working on things that are exclusive to your project, it is a very, very good practice to make a folder uh, and organize your hierarchy there. So you go to the Assets folder, right click, Create and choose Folder. And I'm going to name this Project, enter this folder and to color this floor we're going to make a material which is basically responsible for uh, showing colors and applying shading effects things like that. Right click create folder materials and inside that folder we're going to again right click and choose create material. I'm going to name this floor. Okay. So you see it looks like a sphere, like a circle, but this is basically a preview of how this is going to look like. So with the floor selected, go to the inspector and change its color by clicking on the white rectangle and choose, choosing whatever color you want. I'm going to choose a, a little creamy color like this one here. Okay, Just open that, click and drag around. Okay, And to apply this material here, you can just drag and drop to the floor. Okay, And it's going to look like this. And let me just mute here the game window. And this time if you press play, you should be on that floor. Okay, so something very basic for us. Okay, this is just for you to get used to using the Unity Editor, okay, to, to learn how to make a floor, how to use materials, how to add a first person controller into the game. And once you're done with this, we should save this scene because everything we do is inside a scene. Right now it says untitled with an asterisk, it means that we changed something and we didn't save it. So now we're going to hit file, save scene, 
and we're going to name this game okay and hit save so if you go to the assets folder you're going to see that game is here uh, so let's improve this we go to the project folder we make a new folder called scenes like this and now in the assets folder we grab the game and drop in the scenes folder okay so everything is saved we're not going to lose anything and we can move on to the next lesson where we're going to learn how to make the basketball hoop